Before there was an NXT, before there was an FCW, and before talent would come in from all over the world to WWE, WWE had a strict focus on developing homegrown talent. Whether that came from bodybuilding, amateur wrestling, or even family ties, they strictly focused on creating stars who would lead them into the next generation. They'd find a star, wipe them clean, and build them from the ground up to help carry WWE forwards. One of the greatest pools of talent to ever come to WWE is the OVW class of 2002. The year that saw Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar, John Cena, and Batista all burst onto the WWE scene. This was a time where Stone Cold and The Rock's time was wrapping up and Vince McMahon knew that it was time to build the next wrestling superstar. And little do we know that all four of these men would change wrestling, define an era, and in some weird way, always be linked to one another. These men not only displayed their talents in the wrestling world, but all of them in one form or another made the jump to the mainstream media. Movies, TV shows, memes, UFC, you name it, this crop did it. Here, I give you the legendary OVW4. When people outside the world of wrestling think of a pro wrestler, they don't care about storytelling, they don't care about moves. If you ask an average Joe what they think a wrestler should be, 9 times out of 10, they'll draw you something that looks like Brock Lesnar. WWE scout Gerald Briscoe had his eyes on Brock Lesnar since he was in college, and the entire team knew that they had to sign him. Heyman, JR, Briscoe, you name it, they all saw star written all over Brock Lesnar. He possessed a size, look, and freakish power that they always look for. After winning the 2000 NCAA National Championship in wrestling, Lesnar was headed to OVW. Coming to OVW, Lesnar had no previous wrestling experience, but thankfully OVW was the place they taught you the WWE style. He was a physical specimen who would rip through opponents in OVW with ease, but the amazing part about Lesnar was his explosiveness. For a man his size, he was fast, he'd throw around opponents like it was nothing, and in the odd occasion, out of nowhere, he'd pull out a shooting star press. In OVW, Brock Lesnar and Shelton Benjamin dominated as the Minnesota stretching crew. These two had been college teammates previously and they reunited in OVW and they gave higher ups the perfect mix of power and agility. After Gerald Briscoe and Jim Ross pushed really hard to sign Lesnar, Vince McMahon took one look at the guy and he went, yup, that's it, that is my next top star. In March of 2002, Brock Lesnar made his WWE debut alongside Paul Heyman on an episode of Raw. Obviously, cutting promos wasn't Lesnar's biggest strength, so Heyman was used to cover that up. His strength was his body, his strength, his explosiveness, everything that I just talked about. And who better to have than one of the greatest minds and talkers in the business? Over the coming months, Brock Lesnar was given a mega push. He ran rough shot on that roster like it was nothing. He won the 2002 King of the Ring, and with that came a WWE title opportunity against The Rock at SummerSlam 2002. Lesnar took home the WWE Championship just four months into his WWE career. Over the coming months, he'd feud with top stars like The Undertaker and The Big Show before Heyman turned on him and we got babyface Brock for the first time in his career. WWE at this point made no bones about it. This was their next top wrestling star whether you liked it or not. The look, the athleticism, the versatility, all of it was there in Brock Lesnar. In 2003, he won the Royal Rumble and he defeated Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 19 in a match that wrestling purists were salivating over. Two amateur wrestling machines going one on one. In that match came his second WWE Championship in just a year. Everything came so quickly to Brock and WWE with this monster push did such a great job at establishing a brand new monster in this industry. It's something that WWE has really struggled to do nowadays. Brock Lesnar in his first two years became a three time WWE champion and also the first person ever to main event a WrestleMania one year after making their debut. That is nuts. 
However, even though he was getting this mega push and in the future he was penciled in to be a top star of the business, he wasn't happy. Brock wasn't a fan of the business. The long road schedule didn't work for him and it was wearing on his body to the point where he started to take pills and alcohol. He was physically and mentally burnt out and he chose not to renew his contract come 2004. After injuries cut his NFL career short, Brock went to the UFC where he became a star. He was the biggest box office draw in the sport for the longest time and during his tenure there, he became the UFC heavyweight champion. In the process, he did two things. First, he shelled away this perception of WWE stars not being able to compete in the UFC. Everyone found out that sh this guy's a legit fighter. He can go, he can tear people's head off. And the second was he elevated his star power. If Brock doesn't go tear things up in the UFC, he's not the star he is today. The whole aura around Brock isn't there. Let's say he left WWE and came back a few years later, sure wrestling fans would care, but without the UFC, the outside world just doesn't care as much. He's definitely brought some UFC fans to WWE and vice versa. If Brock doesn't have that legitimate fighting acumen, he's not who we know him as today. One of the other crazy things that I found out was Brock Lesnar is the only person to ever win the WWE, NCAA, and UFC heavyweight titles. That's a feat that probably may never be repeated again. Diverticulitis caused him to retire from the UFC and return to the WWE. In his return, he negotiated a monstrous part-time contract that saw him be featured as an attraction wrestler. During his second run, the biggest accomplishment came in 2014 when he ended the Undertaker's WrestleMania undefeated streak. And since coming back in 2012, he's been giving us amazing match after amazing match meme-worthy moments, and he's been part of some of the most important WWE moments and storylines. The thing with Lesnar which bugs a lot of fans is the part-time schedule and the long title reigns, but honestly, that's what makes Brock Brock. Seeing him every single week, that just doesn't work. But isn't it crazy to think that moving forward, Brock Lesnar was supposed to be the poster child of WWE and not John Cena? Imagine he never left we'd be watching PG babyface Brock Lesnar. That's crazy. But him leaving only made things better and the roster became more stacked in a weird way because it gave others the opportunity to excel. It's surreal how him leaving gave us the next man we're gonna talk about, John Cena. Before John Cena came to OVW, he got his start as a bodybuilder. When that plan failed, Cena took his impressive physique and moved over to the world of pro wrestling. He got his start at Ultimate Pro Wrestling in California before being scouted by the WWE and signed to Ohio Valley Wrestling where he was known as the prototype. He had the physical look that WWE wanted and when he went to OVW, he was in a tag team with Rico and that team found success and became Southern Tag Team Champions and Cena even became the OVW Heavyweight Champion. Rico left OVW and moved to the main roster leaving Cena alone. But ironically enough, when WWE scouts were looking at Rico, they were like, hey, what about that John Cena kid? Cena just possessed this natural charisma. He had the look and theatrics needed in a WWE superstar. The thing with OBW was they signed you because they saw something in you. You didn't need to be an independent wrestler capable of doing 450s and Canadian destroyers. They wanted someone who could be on posters and that they could mold into a WWE star. They wanted that wrestler look. They taught you the WWE way of wrestling and that's sprinkled throughout this video. Independent wrestlers haven't been the ones to become huge stars in WWE. They seasoned you in OVW and up you went to the land of the giants just like John Cena in 2002. In June of that year, Cena made his WWE debut in red trunks looking like generic wrestler 54 and told Kurt Angle he had I'm not gonna do it. Ruthless aggression. After the debut, things didn't go the best for Cena early on. In fact, he himself has been quoted saying that his initial arrival to WWE was a complete failure. He would come out wearing the team color of the city that they were in to get the crowd something to bite on, but he missed that one crucial thing to any WWE superstar, which was a character. 
He was told that he'd be getting his release in 2002 before Stephanie McMahon heard him freestyling in the back of a WWE bus. She told him, hey, why don't you try this out on TV? And the doctor of thugonomics was born. In late 2003, Cena's character started to gain more and more momentum. His rapper gimmick was a natural hit with WWE fans at a time when rap was all the rage. By 2004, he competed in his first WrestleMania and won the US title. But Vince McMahon had bigger plans for Cena. He had proved that he could gel with the fans, he had that natural charisma and look of a big star, so it was time to pull the trigger. In 2005, the final two of the Royal Rumble were two up and coming stars, Batista, who we're gonna get to in a second, and John Cena, both eliminating each other from the match, causing Vince McMahon to scurry on down and tear both quads. We all know this iconic moment and makes me laugh every single time. It's ridiculous. But Batista won the 2005 Royal Rumble. Batista chose the World Heavyweight Championship and that left the WWE title completely free. Who took it? It was John Cena. John Cena turned his eye to the WWE title and JBL. He'd been reigning for a very long time and his challenger at WrestleMania 21 was John Cena. The new WWE champion at that event was John Cena and a new era had been ushered in. Cena became an instant fan favorite at this point, and from this point onwards, WWE simply became John Cena's company. Obviously, Cena was surrounded by an amazing nucleus. You had Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Edge, Kurt Angle, Randy Orton, Batista, and so many others. But Cena's best work came in the later years of his run. After 2007, WWE transitioned to a PG product. Obviously, if your gimmick is coming out and dropping nasty rhymes on people, you need to adapt that and John Cena did just that. He adapted his character and he simply became the franchise. He was the one touring the world and wrestling every night, he was the one making the media appearances, TV shows, you name it, Cena did it. His legacy is way too big to get into here because we're going to be here for a solid hour. But he was simply the star that defined the late 2000s and 2010s. John Cena is a megastar who has translated his wrestling career into a worldwide mainstream star. One of the most recognizable, humble and polarizing WWE superstars and celebrities of all time and he came from this one legendary OVW class of 2002. Earlier I mentioned 2005, that wasn't just a great year for WWE games and John Cena, but it was Batista's big year. Before Batista was Batista, he was known as Leviathan in OVW, kinda a cross between Hulk and a vampire. And I mean, 6'6", six six, built like that, the dude had star written all over him. But before he came to WWE, he had an up and down road. And that was with his life. When he was growing up, he lived in a very violent part of Virginia. He himself at one point turned to the horrible lifestyle and then when he got out of that, he became a bouncer. But Batista in his 30s wasn't ready to give things up just yet. He had been a lifelong fan of wrestling and started to train to become a pro wrestler. He was trained by Offa of the Wild Samoans and then he was scouted out by WWE. He, like Cena, also won the OVW Heavyweight Championship before making the eventual move to WWE. When he moved over, he was brought in as Devon's enforcer, but once those two split, Batista started to get even better. He was drafted to Raw and he aligned himself with Ric Flair. This alignment would eventually result in the forming of one of the greatest groups of all time, Evolution. You had Ric Flair, who was a legend in the business, Triple H, who is the now, and Batista and Randy Orton, who were simply the future. The group was a nod to the Four Horsemen. Crazy enough, Batista wasn't supposed to be part of this group. That was supposed to be Mark Jindrak, but he showed Triple H that he wasn't mature enough, so he didn't get in. During the group's reign of dominance, at one point, they held all the men's gold. It was during this time where they kicked Randy Orton out of the group, and shortly thereafter, we start to get signs of face Batista. WWE were swerving us here with Batista going face, but they saw the reactions and they knew they had to pull the trigger. They started to sow in little seeds at an upcoming turn between Triple H and Batista. 
Batista went on to win the 2005 Royal Rumble and in the famous thumbs up thumbs down segment he chose Triple H as his opponent for WrestleMania 21. At Mania 21, Batista took home the World Heavyweight Championship and on the same night, two new stars were made. A star was made out of Batista and from this point onwards, he became a mainstay on WWE television. He was one of the biggest stars the company had. The knock on him was always that he couldn't deliver good matches, but he dispelled that pretty quick. Great feuds with The Undertaker, John Cena, Rey Mysterio. He just gelled so well with that crop of WWE talent during the late 2000s. Batista oftentimes was in the main event or he was hovering somewhere near it. In 2010, Batista decided to leave WWE because he wasn't a fan of the direction he was going and he transitioned to acting. Batista in the years following would blow everyone away with his natural flair for the big screen and he's part of the highest grossing movie of all time, that being Avengers Endgame. He's a celebrity who, much like Cena, made the transition when it was right. And sure, he isn't as big of a mainstream star as John Cena, but the path he's gone is just crazy. If you're somehow able to transition from a wrestler to an actor in your 30s and 40s, chances are you are pretty damn talented. He had such a historic career when he was in the WWE, but somehow as an actor, he's even better. Obviously the time in which Batista was coming up, fans were a little bit more accepting of the up and coming stars, they didn't always have this itch to have it their way like it is today, but simply put, Batista was just solid. Sure he wasn't Cena, but he was just a little bit below him. And that's what made this class so legendary, was if you weren't the face of the WWE, you were pretty close. When you were called upon, you could take that position no problem. Everything Batista has done, it's just nuts. This video is running a bit long, but the last person we gotta get into is Randy Orton, the son of the legendary cowboy Bob Orton. Weirdly enough, Randy's parents didn't want him to get into pro wrestling because of the semantics of it, but after he was discharged from the army at age 19, he convinced his parents to let him do it. He was a pretty successful amateur wrestler in high school, so things just came naturally to him, plus he had his dad right there to show him the ropes. When he made it to OVW, he took to wrestling like it was nothing. He just had that natural swagger, he obviously had the height, and he would deliver wrestling moves like he had been doing it for years. Once again, he took to wrestling like it was nothing. It was simply in his blood. It was so easy for him. He stood out in that crop that included John Cena, Batista, and Brock Lesnar as he won two OBW hardcore titles before making his way up to the main roster. Once he arrived to WWE full time, they were quick to show us that hey, this man is a blue chip prospect, make sure to keep your eyes on him. The upwards momentum looked like it was there until he suffered a shoulder injury and while he was injured he'd put out these like news segments which did help build his character more and when he returned he joined Evolution. Evolution worked wonders for his career. Randy Orton during this time became the IC champion and more famously the legend killer. Here he'd destroy older legends of the wrestling business and man this time was just fun. You knew they were that invested in him that they would just have him destroy the older legends like it was nothing. He won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship in 2004 and became the youngest world champion in the company's history, beating Lesnar's record from two years previous. But here, Evolution kicked Randy Orton out of the group. Triple H wanted that title, Randy refused, so he was out. During this time, Randy was maybe a little bit too young to be the top babyface in the company. He'd be late for shows, spend all night partying, just living his best life and WWE saw this and took away his world title. But honestly, Randy was already a star at this point and you knew it was just a matter of time before he got back there. His 2005 feud with The Undertaker is legendary and it worked wonders for an up and coming star like Orton. This had theatrics, wrestling, and just crazy moments littered throughout and it made Randy Orton's stock elevate that much higher. In the years that followed, simply put, Randy Orton has been the performer with the best longevity. People complain about how his matches are boring, but that's what's given Randy Orton the career he has. 
He's someone who's gonna wrestle for 10 plus more years. Out of the four guys in this video, Randy's the only one who hasn't left WWE for acting or other ventures. Even though he has acted in some WWE movies, I honestly doubt he'll leave WWE until he's actually done. Randy Orton just does everything perfectly. He's a safe pair of hands who's a legend in the business that's won everything. Anytime you need a safe feuder match, Randy's the guy. Anytime you need to build a big match, Randy's the guy. Anytime you need to switch a title, Randy's the guy. Anytime you need a meme, Randy is the guy. But honestly, isn't it crazy that most of the outside world doesn't know Randy Orton as a wrestler, but more they know him for the RKO? He's made that move simply legendary. It's crazy. You name it, Randy has done it for over 20 years easily an all-time goat in this industry. It's just flat out nuts that all four of these men are known in the outside world. They took their stock in WWE and moved it forward in other avenues, and they didn't just stay content with where they were. You ask someone who grew up in the time I did, chances are one of these guys without a doubt is in their top 10 wrestlers of all time. They simply defined an entire generation. You look at a guy like Brock, simply put, Brock's not Brock if he doesn't leave WWE. Cena, Cena isn't Cena if Brock doesn't leave and WWE doesn't turn PG. Randy, well, without Cena, who's Randy gonna be being a psycho with for the entire time? And then a guy like Batista, who sure, he doesn't have the name value of someone like The Rock, but he's translated his talents so well. In his time in the WWE, we all loved him. And so many people will say that he's the best pure actor out of the WWE crop. All of these guys coming out of OVW. WWE knew that they could do something with these guys and they did just that. Brock leaving made Vince rethink things but he moved his company forward like he always does. The last thing I want to touch on real quick is this revamp of NXT that's rumored. And it has a lot of people freaking out like oh we're not going to get work rate anymore. Or, oh they don't want anyone starting in their 30s. But do you not realize what's happening here? If this is true. They want to give you a whole new generation of wrestling stars. And not just that, but young wrestling stars who will be taught the WWE way and move this company forward. OVW wasn't work rate, Batista wasn't hitting 450s on the indies, and he was just fine. Even looking at WWE today, the biggest star in their company didn't come from the indies. He came from FCW, which was WWE's developmental and he is doing just fine. Obviously this ties into this video a little bit, but honestly, if this is the direction that NXT is gonna be going, be excited. They realize that these guys can't go forever and are turning to new faces and younger talent who will carry WWE forward. So all of you guys jumping to conclusions, we haven't seen anything just yet, take a chill pill, relax. Yo, my voice is done at this point, but real quick, Shout out to OVW man, without OVW we don't have these guys and without Vince McMahon's ability to help them excel in WWE, there's no Batista, no Cena, no Orton and no Lesnar or if they're there, they're not as big as they are today. Let me know in the comments below, who is your favorite member of the OVW4 and why? Is it Cena, Batista, Lesnar or is it Randy Orton? And as always, stay safe, take care.